Hello and welcome to the next episode in this Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series. Today I'll be showing you how to install the engine, where you can find free content, and we'll briefly go over system requirements for running Unreal Engine 4. For those of you that already have the engine installed, you can skip past this video. However, if you'd like to learn how to install the engine, you want to see about that extra content, or if you're just a completionist like me and you have to watch every video in that playlist, then stick around and we'll go through it all. First thing we're going to do is open up our internet browser and type in Unreal Engine 4. Big surprise there. Unreal Engine 4 will take you to a splash page where they're showing off all the wonderful things you can create in Unreal Engine 4, which seems really cool, although it's going to take a lot of work to get there. Click on Get Started Now and you'll be taken to the License Options page. As game creators, we're going to get a publishing license. Clicking on that will ask you to log into your account. And once you log into your account, you'll get prompted with a download for the Epic Games Launcher. I'll let you download that if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the Epic Games Launcher. Once you've downloaded and installed the Epic Games Launcher, it'll ask you again to sign into your account. If you haven't got an account, just create one. It's free of charge and there's no spam mail. In fact, the emails I get regarding new content are actually pretty handy. And whatever email address you elect to use will also give you updates on to when a new version of the engine is out. If you've used the Epic Games Launcher before and the last page you used was the Unreal Engine page, you'll automatically be taken here. But for most of you, it's likely going to take you to the home page. For those of you curious or wondering, yes, the second tab down is the official Epic Games Store, but we don't have to click on that at all. We can completely avoid the store if you feel so inclined or if you have any particularly strong feelings about it. All you need to do is click on Unreal Engine. The first page will give you news, updates, stuff from the community, all those good things. But to download the engine, we want to go over to library. You can see here I have two versions of the engine installed as you would have seen in my previous video. To install a new version of the engine, click on the plus sign and then select which version of the engine you want from the drop down menu. Once you've selected it, hit install. Once you've set that to download, you can check on your download with the download tab here. But in the meantime, we'll go over to system requirements. So this is a great introduction, not only to the system requirements, but also the Unreal Engine 4 documentation. You will notice here it says Windows 10 64 bit. For those of you using Mac or Linux, you can also download Unreal Engine. The Mac client is natively supported. However, Linux will have to install Unreal Engine through the source code. And there is a guide to do that through this documentation. For the recommended hardware, a lot of these are guidelines. Nvidia or AMD doesn't matter as far as your graphics card is concerned. As I mentioned in the previous video, if you have Visual Studio installed in Windows 10 or Xcode on Mac OS, then double clicking on any of those blueprint nodes will open up said program and show you the C++ code. However, it is not necessary to have either installed. You can create a game just using blueprints. Scrolling down to the bottom of the page, we see an example system. Again, NVIDIA is not a requirement. AMD will work just fine. And that's pretty much it. So long as you have a computer that was built in the last five years or with some decent specs, you should be absolutely fine to run Unreal Engine on your computer. One thing I will note though, is that hard drive space can quickly become an issue. One of the many practices that I will encourage you to do is make backups of your project. Whether that's using a specific program designed to back up your entire hard drive or making backups for the folder. Personally, I prefer to make backups after I've done a day's work in case the next day I do something and I break something and I want to go and revert all my changes. Moving back to the Epic Games Launcher, you'll see at the top here there's a Marketplace tab. Clicking on the Marketplace tab will take you 
to the Unreal Engine marketplace, which has nothing to do with the Epic Game Store. This is a marketplace for buying assets or code from other developers all across the world who have created things for you to use. Personally, I've never bought anything from here, but I've seen some wonderful creations. If you feel so inclined, you may buy something, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be using free content only. If you hover over to the free drop down here, you'll see four categories. Epic Games content is, as it suggests, content designed by Epic Games for you to use as much as you want. Here you'll see that I already own some of this content. I'd recommend the Twin Motion materials, more on that later. But you can scroll down here and take any content you want. If you're familiar with Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus, then you'll be familiar with the concept of getting free stuff every month. Unreal Engine is no different. The Epic Games Store sponsors content every month to be used. And here is this month's content. Furthermore, there is the Mega Scan section, which I will touch on again later, and the permanently free collection. I'd encourage you to get any of this content, all of this content, as much as you want. It's not going to take up your hard drive space until you download it. Purchasing content and downloading content are two different things. Once you've purchased content and added it to your library, it'll be added down here to the vault. Most of this content has sat here for a while. I haven't had a chance to use it all, but you can see here I have the option to add to project. When you add content to a project, that's when that content will be downloaded and cached. Meaning that if you want to use the same content for another project, it won't be downloaded again. Speaking of which, if we scroll down to the bottom here, over to Megascan Snow, you can see that I've already got this indicated by the drop down menu being filled in. You can see how much space that's taking in the cache, which is a fairly big chunk, which is why I wanted to mention Megascan separately. Megascans contain some of the most detailed material packs you'll ever find. However, with those details comes a size bump. Materials that we'll be using in this project won't be quite as big. However, if you want to experiment with mega scans, make sure your machine is not only nice and hefty, but that you've also got the hard drive space. This is but one of the mega scans available. One pack I definitely recommend downloading is the Military Weapons Dark Pack. Clicking on any of these will take you back to the Marketplace tab where you'll be able to assess that content further and see if you like it. And whether or not you want to use this all the way to your final game or you'd prefer to design your own weapons later on in something like 3DS Max, Maya and Blender, it's always a good idea to have a placeholder in there just so you can get a feel for how things are coming along. Once the engine has done downloading, click launch, and that will automatically minimize the Epic Games launcher and open up the first instance of the editor. This is the first page you'll be greeted with. If you have other projects, you can open them from here. Although you don't always need to go through this splash page, you can create a desktop shortcut, which is much faster. Click on games and you'll be taken to the next page where you can select a template. But as I referenced in our last video, the most important thing for you to take away from this is understanding how everything works. If we start from a template, we'll be skipping a bunch of important steps, which are not only required for us to understand how our character is working, but also so we can build on top of him later. So for this project, will be selecting blank. Here you can decide whether you'd like to use blueprints or C++. Obviously we're going to be using blueprints. I've never had to drop down the quality, but I'd imagine that that quality might have something to do with whether you design on desktop console or mobile tablet. 
Starter content is always a great thing to have. We'll have a play with that in the next video. And ray tracing for those of you with anything from the NVIDIA 2000 series. Give your project a name. One thing to keep in mind is that when we're creating anything in our code or anything with blueprints, we're very unlikely to use spaces. Most coding languages don't rely on spaces. They rely on capitalization to understand the difference between words. So we'll reflect that here. I'm going to call my project tutorial FPS. If you'd like to, you can leave an underscore in there as well. Underscores are perfectly fine for code. And then when you're ready, hit create project. Once your project is loaded, you'll be greeted with this screen. And in the next video, I'll go through everything that you can see on this screen and a few other things to get us started with developing games. Yeah.